Praise the Lord. Good morning, Montgomery Baptist Church, and good morning on Facebook Live. We are pleased and thankful to be here with you again on this second Sunday, 2020. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Ahmed Davis. I'm a deacon here at Montgomery Baptist Church. It's good to see you all in the room here again, and it's good to be with you on Facebook. For our call to worship this morning, we'll be looking at Psalm number 59, verses 16 and 17, where the word of the Lord reads, But I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning. For you have been my defense and my refuge in the day of my trouble. To you, O oh my strength, I will sing praises, for God is my defense, my God of mercy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here in this room and on this video at this day, at this appointed time, that we might come together and hear a word through our pastor from you, Father God, that would uplift, that would convict, that would do all things to draw us closer unto you, Father God. Even now, you know exactly what each and every one of us is dealing with. You know our circumstance. You know our needs, Father God. And so speak to us this morning. Reveal yourself in a new and a mighty way, Father God. Encourage us for the week that is ahead. Gird our feet. Protect our hearts, Father God. Bless and nurture our spirits as only you can. And through it all, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that only you are due. In the matchless name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. It truly is a blessing to be back with you uh, and to know that the Lord has allowed us to see through another week. We're more than halfway through 2020, and it has been a tough year, but we know that God is still able. We just need to be willing to stay encouraged this morning that God is going to reveal himself in a new and a mighty way. I just want to remind everyone that the church is open. We are observing all appropriate guidelines for social distancing and for mask wearing. We have an opportunity for those of you who want to come visit with us in our midst to be here with us to praise the Lord. We also thank you for joining us on Facebook. If you can't be here in person or if you're not yet comfortable, that's fine. Just what's most important is wherever you are to understand that you still have an opportunity to hear God's word. You still have an opportunity to be blessed and you still have an opportunity to be a blessing. You can be a blessing with your time, you can be a blessing with your talent, and you can be a blessing with your tenth, even now. And there's nothing that's happened with this pandemic that has changed that. God loves you and God knows where you are and he can bless you and be with you right where you are. For this morning's word, we're going to be also in the book of Psalms. And so if you would turn with me in the book of Psalms, specifically to Psalm 100. Pastor will be preaching from Psalm 100 this morning. That is, as these things go, one of the shorter chapters in the Bible. So we'll cover the entire psalm, which is five verses. I'll give you a second to pull that up on your swords, on your apps. If you're here with me in the room, if you would please stand as we prepare to read God's word. And for those of you on Facebook as well. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and this is Psalm 100, where the word of the Lord reads, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Let the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of God's word. Let all God's people say amen. 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 You may be seated. Pastor's words from the heart this morning read as follows. With the condition that the world is in today, there is no shortage of people who need help in one way or another. As we do our best to serve the Lord, we will find ourselves helping others along the way. 
Our attitude is our attitude as we serve should be one of joy because God has blessed us to be a blessing. When we stop and think about how good God has been and continues to be to us, even in the midst of a pandemic, how can we not be glad as we strive to do his will in the midst of this uncertainty? Whether we are entering his gates through social media as you are right now, or actually returning to a physical structure as those of us here in this place, remember that the Lord is still good and his mercy is still something that we can count on from day to day. May the Spirit of God bless you today. That's right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. All you out there in Facebook land, thank you for being with us this morning. Today is a good day because we are here, you are there, and we are one in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 If you have your word as we just read together, turn it over again to Psalms 100. Keep it there for a while. And we're going to talk about this morning why we should serve the Lord with gladness. Why we should serve the Lord and not just serve him, but with gladness. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for another opportunity to open up the word of God on this Sunday morning. Truly, this is the day that you have made and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Your word says with two or three are gathered together in your name. We meet that criteria and we know that your presence is here thank you father for this word might someone under the sound of my voice be blessed and encouraged to our, our closer walk with you and to give you more praise thank you in jesus the mighty name we pray the name that is still above all names the name that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to in that name we pray amen. amen in psalms 100 we start off by saying that Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, that means everybody, from coast to coast, we should be making a joyful noise unto the Lord. And then we're instructed to serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. We should serve the Lord with gladness. One of the things that you have to understand if you are a child of God is you should be serving the Lord. In everything you do and everything you say, you should be serving the Lord. And you should serve him with the proper attitude. It should be an attitude of gladness. It shouldn't be, oh, I got to get up and, and go to the church again. Uh, go to this activity at the church. Oh, I got to turn my computer on. Be a, there in that room for 20, 30, 45 minutes listening to the word of God, or I got to be at a meeting concerning things of the church. You should be serving the Lord with gladness. Amen. And you should come in for his presence with singing. Even if you are on social media, I would encourage you to do this next time you, you join with us. 15, 20 minutes before the service begins, get some music going in your home. As the saying goes, Get your praise on. Get some music going, okay? So that when we go into the service together, when you come into the service with us here at the church, you will come before his presence with singing. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's why you should serve the Lord. Now, I want to emphasize why we should serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with a great attitude. We're going to give you a couple of reasons here why we should serve with attitude and come before his presence with singing. Why? Because verse 3 gives us the first reason, the Lord, he is God. Psalms 100, for those who just came in. The Lord, he is God. And all the chaos, and we understand what's going on in the world. We know we have a major virus going through our world today. We know we got social unrest going on in our world today. But we also need to recognize that God is still God. Amen. Amen. And ultimately, yes, we got to listen to certain people with certain things and who are smarter than we are. We still got to remember who God is. Amen. 
And at the end of the day, I'm here to give you a fact that God is still in control. Yes, sir. God is still God. Yes. Okay? And so one of the reasons you should serve him with gladness is because he is God. The second reason you should serve him with our gladness, it tells us in verse 3, that he made us. We didn't make ourselves. You, you know, the Bible tells us again in this like the book of Psalms that I will praise him for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God did a great job on you and me. Amen? Amen. Now let's be honest. Sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, you look at yourself got yourself all dressed, you got your hair right, or, or your head right if you don't got no hair. Amen? Amen. But sometimes you look at yourself and you say to yourself, I look good. Yeah. I'm wearing that well. Mm -hmm. I'm in the best shape I've been in in years. You, we look at ourselves at different phases in our life and we, and we want to be very positive. But I'm here to remind you that what we see, we didn't create. God made this. God made you. And if you look good, it's because of the grace and favor of God upon your life. Amen? Amen. Amen? So that's another reason why you should praise him, why you should serve him with the gladness, because he made you. See, if it was left to us to make ourselves, we would mess it all up. We have trouble following directions when we're trying to cook something. Some people think it's easy just to cook an egg, but some folks can't get that right. Okay? Some folks think it's easy just to get up and walk, but some folks just fall down all over the place. If we would have made ourselves, we'd have had two left arms, two right legs, no telling where our eyes would have been. Thank God that he made us because he knew what he was doing. And yes, as the psalmist said, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. But it's God who made us. That's why you should serve him with gladness. That's why you should have the right attitude when you come into his presence. That's why you should always have a song in your heart because God made you, and I'm here to tell you out in social media land and those who are here right now, you look good. And you look good because God made you that way. Another reason why we should serve him with a gladness is also found in verse 3. We are his people. We are his people. Everybody needs somebody, amen? Amen. amen. Everybody likes family. It's good when you got your people around, amen? amen? It's good when, as my wife and I did this weekend, go to Carolina, it was a sad occasion to bury a cousin, but it was great to be around family and see our people. Getting around your people, that makes you feel good, doesn't it? Yes, sir. But you know what? When you think that we're God's people and we have a big family of God, even though now we're divided by distance because of what's going on in our world today, we still have a family of God. Amen. We still have brothers and sisters in Christ. We still have a God that we collectively can call on and ask him for assistance, ask him to watch over us and to keep those apart from our sight. We are still his people. People in the world today are a whole lot lost right now. From the top down, people are just lost. I am so thankful that at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, I can still look to the hills from what's coming to my help because my help still comes from the Lord, because he is still my father. Amen. He is still the mighty one. And yes, no matter what you read, see, or hear, make no mistake about it, God is still in charge, and also make no mistake about knowing this. God knows what's going on right now. And he sees all. And yes, he will... Bring everybody into account, the Bible tells us, of all everything that we've done in our body, whether good or bad. But I'm thankful in the midst of even knowing that, that I'm still his child. In the midst of what I'm going through and you're going through, you're still his children. Amen. We still have God. We still have an Abba Father. 
we're still his children. That's why you should serve him with gladness. Because no matter how difficult you think your life is right now, and it may be, in fact, more than likely is difficult right now, God has still been good to you. And God is still keeping you. And whatever you do, whether it's making a phone call, whether it's reaching out to somebody that the Lord lays upon your heart, you should do it with gladness. Whether you send somebody a mail or send somebody a check or just call them just to say, I'm just thinking about you. You should do it with gladness. Now, I'm just calling you because, well, I want to sleep and I don't want to feel guilty, so uh, I'm just going to, no. I'm just happy to hear your voice. I just wanted to call you and let you know I'm thinking about you and I'm praying for you. And if you need anything or if I could help you in any way, even though we're separated, I will do what I can for you. Whatever you do, we have a people and we have a God and we should serve him with gladness because he is still God. And then you go down to verse five. We're gonna pass on verse four right now, but I will get back to it in a minute. Why should we serve the Lord with, with a gladness? And why should we have a song in our heart, even in the midst of a heartless society and world? Because the Lord is good. Man. God is still good. He woke you up this morning as an old saying goes, and he started you on your way. And everything didn't feel good when you woke up this morning, but God still gave you the strength and the wherewithal, as we say at work sometimes, to keep it moving. No, you didn't jump out as bed as quickly as you did 20 years ago, but you got out. Took you a little while longer to get that focus back, but you got it back. You might have been under some financial duress. Took you a while to begin to see the light of day, but now you're seeing the brighter light. Took you a while to get everybody in your family on the same page, but look at you now. The doctor has given you certain things that you got to do, and it was a struggle, but you finally been getting it together, and now you can do things that you wanted to do for a long time. God is good. Look at you now. Amen. You're making money now in an economy where a whole lot of folks ain't making a lot of money. And even if you lost money, look at you now. God is still providing for you. Amen. Now, you might not go out to eat five days a week like you did before, but you know what? You thank God that you got five days worth of food in your house. Yes, sir. Yeah. You thank God that you got family, and, and this ain't a small thing, that could put a meal together, amen? Right, right. And you could do it yourself if need be. God is good. Yes, That's why you need to serve him with gladness. And yes, it could be depressing looking at the news today. You shouldn't look at it all day, every day, because it will just wear you out. But after you look at the news, and even if you get discouraged, you got to step back and reflect and say, wait a minute. God is still good to me and mine. God is still keeping me. God is still providing for my every need. Yeah. Haven't been back in the office for a while, but God is still looking out for me. God is good. Yeah. That's why you should serve him with gladness because our God is a great and mighty God. And even in the midst of all this chaos, God is still looking out for his people because we are the sheep of his pasture. He is our shepherd. The psalmist also said, the Lord is my shepherd. He's providing for you. He's looking out for you. That's why you don't got to worry about a whole lot because God is still God and he's still in control because he's good. Why should you serve him with a gladness? Because again, look at the second thing in verse 5. His mercy is everlasting. Yes, sir. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. 
Lamentations chapter 3, because his compassions fell not. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God that he's keeping you. Thank God that his mercy is renewed every morning. I don't know if you really understand it, but you need the mercy of God now more than ever in your life. Amen. You need God's mercy now more than ever in your family. You need God's mercy now more than ever upon your children. You know, for those who have been sequestered, as we mostly all have been, and if you got families, it's the mercy of God that's keeping us together and having us up. Amen? Families, we love our spouses, we love our children. But after a while, it gets kind of tight. And it's just human nature. And maybe before, you would have said, oh, no. But God's mercy is keeping you. And guess what? God's mercy isn't just keeping you. It's keeping all of us. It's keeping all of us. Because his mercy is everlasting. to endure always. That's why we should serve the Lord with gladness because he is always being good to his people. Yeah. He's always being good to his people. You can't think of a time in your life where God wasn't good to you. You might not have liked what he did. You might not have approved it because you don't have to approve. We don't approve what God does in terms of giving him the permission. God's going to do what God's going to do. Amen? Yes, sir. But I can promise you this. Part of that process is going to be his mercy because it's everlasting. We live in a very tense world right now. And it doesn't take a lot for somebody to get on your nerves. Amen? Amen. It doesn't take a lot. You, you want to just take another step that you don't, you wouldn't normally take and you know you shouldn't take. And it's God's mercy that keeps you and removes the situation from your life and your presence. His mercy is everlasting. That's why we should serve the Lord with gladness. That's why we should come before his presence with singing. That's why, again, I'm encouraging you, don't just tune in at 10 a.m., but 9.30, 9.45, get some music going in your home and begin to praise the Lord yourself because he is so good. Why should we serve him? Part of verse 5 in Psalms 100. Because this truth endures to all generations. The Bible tells us this. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same promises he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we have some the same promises as well. When he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, it wasn't just for the 12 disciples. It's for you and I today. When he says, greater is he that is in me than he is in the world, and you than he is in the world, he means it. When he says, call unto me in Jeremiah 33, and I will answer you, it's still truth. Yeah. And show you great and mighty things that you don't know about. His truth endures to all generations. It's a generational truth. The same truth that kept our great grandparents and all that they went through. The same truth that kept our grandparents and all that they went through. The same truth that kept our parents and all that they went through. It's the same truth that's keeping you and I today. Yeah. This truth endures to all generations. It is a generational truth. That's why we serve the Lord with gladness. Because no matter what we feel, his truth is for real. Yes, sir. And it's keeping us day by day. He's keeping you on the highway of life day by day, on the literal highways of life and on the emotional highways of life. God's truth is still his truth, and he is still keeping you and me. 
That's why we should serve him with gladness. That's why now let's focus on verses 1 and 4. Why we should make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Yes, sir. We should praise God. Yes. We should give him glory. And it should be a loud noise. The world is a loud place right now. <laughs> well, our praise should be louder. Because again, even in the midst of all the chaos, God is still good. That's why going down to verse 4, we should enter his gates with thanksgiving. Not dragging ourselves into the house of the Lord, but thankful that God has kept us through yeah, another week. Man. Thankful that we were able to get up and get some traction and get to his house. Thankful that we could see hit this service on Facebook Live. And even though we're not in the presence of the church building itself, we're in the presence of the Almighty. So wherever you're sitting, yeah. wherever you're standing, you should come to your kitchen, come to your bedroom, come to your office with praise and thanksgiving. Amen. Because you're entering into the presence of the Almighty. You're entering into his gates. That's why you should serve him with gladness. Because he's given you another opportunity to come into his presence. He didn't have to do it. You never know how quickly life is going to change. You never know when our life is going to be over. Sometimes we think we got it written someplace that we're supposed to live into our 80s and 90s and then just fall asleep one day and wake up in heaven. It's not always like that. You need to praise the Lord while you can. Yes, sir. Enter into his presence while you can. Because you never know when your last breath is going to be taken. When we were at the service for my cousin, one thing that was <coughs> remarkable that we were talking about with was that how he went to the hospital on a Thursday and he wasn't doing great, but he was better. I got to uh, talk to him later that evening on a Thursday and his daughter, wow, he perked right up. That was great. Friday, the doctors are saying, oh man, this treatment, he's really fighting. Saturday, he's gone. This is why you need to praise the Lord while you can. And Thanksgiving. Because the Bible makes it clear also, we don't know what the day is going to bring forth. So when you have a chance to serve the Lord in any capacity, do it with gladness. Do it with thankfulness because he is good. And verse 4 also tells us that we don't just come into his gates with thanksgiving because God has been so good to us, but we should come into his courts with praise. Yes, sir. I'm just there so nobody don't call me and wonder where I'm at. You're coming to the house of the Lord, praising the Lord. Because he's kept you and your family. He's given you peace. We, we've learned more about each other, those with families at home, than we wanted to learn probably in 20 years. But you learn a lot when you're in the same house, don't you? Mm -hmm. Day in and day out. You thought you knew, but you didn't really know. Now you know some more. So when you get a chance to come into the presence of God, you should give him praise. And you should be thankful that God has spared you another day. Yes, and then you should bless his name. That's why the psalmist also says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless his name. Yes. So with all this being said, yes, you should serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. And it can be out of tune singing. It ain't got to be every note hit right. Because it's your song of praise. But you should be so glad that God has kept you. And that God is keeping you. If we ain't learned nothing else over this last year, life ain't always easy. And we're not always promised another day. 
That's why we should make every day count when it comes to serving the Lord. That's why we should do it with gladness. That's why we should be singing songs of praise to him because he made us, because he's good, because of his mercy and his truth is always enduring. And when it's all said and done, the same God that kept, as I said earlier, your ancestors and took them through difficult trials and storms. Well, guess who's taking us through the storms of life right now? Our God. So it's a lot going on in the world today. It's a lot of tension in the world today. But I want you to be encouraged this morning to serve the Lord with gladness. Because in spite of what you're feeling right now, God is being good to you. God has been good to you. God created you for a purpose, and with purpose, might I say, and for a purpose. He made us because he is good Amen. and his mercy is everlasting. Amen. Don't give up on God. Amen. Don't let go. Don't be discouraged and even if you are discouraged, make it for just a second. Mm -hmm. And then get your praise back on. Because at the end of the day, it's by God's mercy that we are still here. At the end of the day, it's by God's mercy that we're still able to pay our bills. At the end of the day, it's because of God's mercy and goodness to us that we're still able to eat the foods we could eat and want to eat, even through this crisis. At the end of the day, it's God that got you to this building this morning. It's God that is keeping you secure wherever you are right now in your homes because of his goodness and mercy. Don't think just because you're outside of the building that God doesn't require and want and desire that we serve him. He does want us to still serve him. And he wants us to serve him with gladness. Let me give you one more verse to think about. Because we got to have the right attitude when we serve the Lord. Talk, go quickly to Romans chapter 12. As you hear the music playing in the background, I want you to surrender all as you serve Him. Look at Romans 12 quickly with me in verse 11. In fact, let's start with verse 10. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. And this is the focus verse for what I'm saying to you this morning. Not soft for a business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Yeah. Have the right attitude. Yeah. Serve the Lord with gladness. Don't become lazy. God's work still needs to be done. There are still souls out there that are lost. There are still people who need to be encouraged day by day. So don't be slothful. Have the right attitude. Serve the Lord with joy and gladness. I hope this morning that you were encouraged by something that was said. Know that God loves you Know that God isn't just dumping you off at a wasteland in your life, but his mercy endures forever. And no matter what you feel, he loves you now just as much as he ever did, in fact, more. But we got to have an attitude of service and must serve him with gladness. And wherever you're watching or listening from, you have to enter into his gates, his presence, with thanksgiving. Because no matter how difficult our world is today, God is still good. I hope you will take this message with you this morning. And if you are not a child of God listening under the sound of my voice, let me make it very clear. Jesus died for you. 
And what you need to do is say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I confess them before you, and I ask you to come into my heart, and I place my life in your hands. Thank you for saving me, Lord Jesus, and help me now to serve you with gladness for all that you have done and continue to do for me. Be encouraged this morning. Serve the Lord with gladness. Give God some praise from wherever you're at. Praise the Lord. It's only a few of us in here, but we can do better than that. Bless the Lord this morning. For he is great and great and great and great. For those of you on Facebook as well, be encouraged. Be excited this morning about what God is doing in your life, even now, even in spite of this circumstance. As Pastor said, no understand and appreciate that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. It's so interesting that he should lift up that verse this week because I literally was thinking about that this week. We hear that verse from time to time and the truth is this. When I was a kid, I got teased about my ears and I thought this week, God made my ears big for such a time as this. You have no idea how easy it is to put that mask on and hook it around these big ears that I have and that they stay in place the whole time. So I know even now, God made me exactly as he desired to have me. God made you exactly as he desired to have you. Be encouraged this morning because you are special and you are loved. Understand this as we prepare to close. You heard the pastor talk about it. We've been seeing it all over the place. The pandemic has been with us for a while, and sadly, what we're seeing is a rise in many, actually almost all of the states here in the United States. What we have done in this country really has been the opposite of what has happened everywhere else in the world. And even now, people really don't believe it. There was a story that I saw last night online about a 30-year-old man who went to a COVID party, a group of young people who believed this whole thing was a hoax. And so knowing that one of the people who was in attendance, if not the host, was already positive for coronavirus, they decided to go and get together and to have a party and to see if it really was a hoax. And this 30-year-old man the last words that he spoke before he passed were to say, I think I made a mistake. And what struck me about that is I saw a lot of ties to what is going to happen one day with our spiritual selves. The Bible tells us this. There are going to be people, there are people right now who believe that the words of the gospel are a hoax. And there's going to come a time when people are going to be face to face with the Lord. We know that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There's going to be a time when there are people who are going to say, I think I made a mistake. You, within the sound of my voice in this room, you looking at me right now on Facebook, know the truth. You are able to share. It's not up to you to decide whether people receive that but you have the ability and the capability to share God's word. Purpose in your heart. Just one person, at least one person. Share the love of Christ because you truly can make the difference between eternal life and death for some. Be blessed, be encouraged, and we'll see you next week. As we prepare to close here, we're going to sing a few songs of praise and worship. If you didn't do it before this service, as Pastor encouraged, take a moment now. Bless the Lord wherever you are. Sing a song of praise for God truly is worthy. Be blessed.